Kusadesi, where our cruise ship docked, is shown there with Ephesus at the lower part of the screen on those place marks. And you can tell just how close Ephesus and Kusadesi are from Athens and from our recent, most recent port of call, which is up in the upper right hand corner in Istanbul, Turkey. This close up map shows the relationship of uh, the Library of Ephesus, the Ephesus Amphitheater, the Temple of Artemis, and up in the uh, left hand corner and looks like kind of far away is a place mark showing Holy Mary's home. And then uh, in the upper part of the screen you can see the uh, Aegean Sea. We got up early in the morning on April 13th, got on a bus, and started driving around the countryside on our way to some of the uh, historical sites. And you can see that there are many olive groves and it's very hilly, it gets hilly very quickly from the sea coast. And this is a very fertile and productive land for agricultural purposes. Uh, they have lots of trees of different sorts and this gives you a feel for the area. The bus stopped and we walked through the city gates of an ancient village settlement. We stopped at this little village, little hillside village, and they had an open air cafe and Carolyn had uh, what she said was the strongest coffee, Turkish coffee, she'd ever had in her life. Here's an interesting little roadside stop. This was a pottery factory. You can see the guy with the potter's wheel. They made all kinds of beautiful handmade pottery and uh, we couldn't resist. And I bought a coffee cup. It's a very beautiful little cup. I paid too much for it, but it's really nice. One of the apostles took Mary, the mother of Jesus, to live on this mountainside. And this is where she died. At the base of that hill, is a monument dedicated to the Virgin Mary. I'll now relate the tragic tale of Ephesus and the Temple of Artemis. In 1100 AD, a troop of crusaders stops at a muddy little village in Asia Minor. Their leader looks around. Confused, he dismounts. This place is not what he expected. He read in the ancient texts that this was a large seaport with many ships docked in its bay, but it isn't. The sea is three miles away and the village is located in a swamp. There are no ships to be seen. The leader finds a nearby man and asks, Sir, is this the city of Ephesus? It was called that once. Now it is named Ayu Saluk. Well, where is your bay? Where are the trading ships? And where is the magnificent Greek temple that we have heard about? Now it's the man's turn to be confused. Temple? What temple, sir? We have no temple here. And so, 800 years after its destruction, the magnificent temple of Artemis at Ephesus, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, had been completely forgotten by the people of the town that once held it in such pride. And there's no doubt that the temple was indeed magnificent. I have seen the walls and hanging gardens of ancient Babylon, wrote Philon of Byzantium, the statue of Olympian Zeus, the Colossus of Rhodes, the mighty work of the pyramids, and the tomb of Mausolus. But when I saw the temple at Ephesus rising to the clouds, all these other wonders were put in the shade. So what happened to this great temple? And what happened to the city that hosted it? What turned Ephesus from a busy port of trade to a few shacks in a swamp? Shortly after destruction of the temple, around 356 BC, a new temple was commissioned. The architect was Scopus of Paros, one of the most famous sculptors of his day. 
and Ephesus was one of the greatest cities in Asia Minor at this point, and no expense was spared in its construction. The building was constructed completely with marble, and one of its most unusual features were columns whose lower portions were carved with figures in high relief. The temple also housed many works of art, including bronze statues. Pliny recorded the length of this new temple at 425 feet, the width at 225 feet, and some 127 columns, each 60 feet high, supported the roof. In comparison, the Parthenon on the Acropolis in Athens is less than half the, its size. This last and greatest temple of Artemis was destroyed during a raid by the Goths in 262 AD. By this time, both the city and the religion of Artemis were in decline, and when the Roman Emperor Constantine rebuilt much of Ephesus a century later, he declined to restore the temple. He had become a Christian and had little interest in pagan temples. Despite Constantine's efforts, Ephesus declined in its importance as a crossroads of trade. The bay where ships docked disappeared as silt from the river filled it in. In the end, what was left of the city was miles from the sea. Many of the inhabitants left the swampy lowland to live in the surrounding hills. Those that remained used the ruins of the temple as a source of building materials, and many of the fine structures were pounded into powder to make lime for wall plaster. Centuries passed after its final destruction in 262 AD. But in 1863, the British Museum sent John Wood, an architect, to search for the temple. And finally, in 1869, at the bottom of a muddy 20-foot deep pit, his crew struck the base of the great temple. Excavation left a hole some 300 feet wide and 500 feet long, and the remains of some of the sculptured portions were found and shipped to the British Museum, where they remain today. Ultimately, five temples were excavated, one on top of the other. Today, the side of the temple is a marshy field with only a single column, which was the ruse for a stork when I took the photo. But once there stood in that place one of the wonders of the ancient world.